Hi everyone, today's lesson is solutions of equations. Take out your lesson worksheet if you have a copy. If not, grab a sheet of loose leaf paper and a pencil so you can copy examples and take some notes as we go through the lesson. Let's get started. Okay, here's the problem. It says find the number of solutions of this equation. Now, if you take a look at this equation, you'll see that there is a lot going on here, right? We've got variables on both sides and distributive property. I see like terms. We have a lot. And if we were going to solve this problem, it would take us a lot of steps to do that. However, we're not doing that today. Today, all we are doing is figuring out how many solutions this equation has. So if you look at the bottom here, these are the different choices. Now, all of the equations that you have solved so far up until this point have one solution. But it is possible for an equation to have no solution at all or to have infinite solutions. So let me explain what they mean. One solution means that there is one and only one answer that would make the equation true. Like if you have x plus 1 equals 4, then x has to be 3. It can't be anything other than 3. That's it. No solution means that there is no possible solution. There is no value of x that you could ever come up with that would make both sides of an equation equal the same number. Infinite solutions means you can put any number in the world in place of the variable and both sides of, these, of the equations are going to be equal to each other. So there is an infinite number of solutions. Any number you can ever think of, positive, negative, large, small, fraction, decimal, it doesn't matter. Every single number in the world is a solution of that particular equation. Okay, so let's go through the steps and I'll explain how to do this. First thing we want to do for step one is we are going to simplify each side of the equation. So we're going to use the distributive property and we're going to combine like terms and we're just going to simplify it. I'm going to start out by using the distributive property on the left side here. I'm going to do 3 times 4x, which is 12x, and then I'm going to do 3 times 8, which is negative 24. On the right side, I don't have the distributive property, but I do have some like terms. I can add the 10x with this 2x, right? I can combine those together, and that would give me 12x. And then I'm just going to bring down this minus 24. All right, so each side is simplified. And I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to start trying to cancel things out and get the variables together. All I'm doing is simplifying each side, and I'm going to stop there. Now at this point, I am going to compare the expressions. And there's two things I'm going to compare. I'm going to compare the coefficients and the constants. So let's start with the coefficients. The coefficients are the numbers that are multiplied to the variable. So x is the variable, 12 is the coefficient. On the right side, x is the variable, 12 is the coefficient. So if you need to make a little note to yourself, maybe down here, where it says coefficient, you could say that it's the number multiplied to the variable. Okay, so now we know that the coefficients are both 12. They are the same, right? This particular um, equation has the same coefficients. So I'm going to make a little note of that. All right, now we're going to compare what we call the constants. And the constants are the plain numbers that are added or subtracted. So no variable, right? Negative 24 is the constant on the left side. Negative 24 is the constant on the right side. So these expressions also have the same constant. So now we just have to look at our choices on the bottom here and see which one it is. So the same coefficient and the same constant. So check these three. Do you see which one it is? So hopefully you realized that it is this one, right? that it is infinite solutions because this equation has the same coefficient on both sides and that coefficient was 12, right? They both have 12x. 
and they also had the same constants on both sides, which was negative 24. All right, let's uh, look at some more problems. Now, if you are already feeling confident about this, like you know what you're doing, why don't you try to do these four on your own right now? And then when you finish, you can restart the video and you can check the answers with me. If you want to watch me do another one or even two more and maybe then try some on your own, you can stop and start the video whenever you want, right? Whenever you feel comfortable. Okay, so here we go. 5x minus 8. That is already simplified. I have nothing to do there, right? There is no distributive property. There's no like terms. I got nothing. On the right side, I can distribute, right? I'm going to multiply this 5, and that's going to give me 5x, and then 5 times 2 gives me 10. All right, so let's compare. My coefficients, I have 5 and I have 5. So I'm going to say that we have the same coefficients. Right, it's 5 on both sides. Same coefficient. All right, now let's compare the constant. The left side has negative 8, and the right side has positive 10. So these two expressions have different constants. All right, so let's look up at the top here then. Right, you still have it on your paper, but on this slide I just put it on the top so I could see it again too. I'm looking for the same coefficient with different constants. So hopefully you realized that that's this one, right? And that means there is no solution. Okay, moving on. Let's simplify. I'm going to start out by looking for the distributive property and combining like terms. So this left side is going to simplify to 9x minus 45. And this right side, again, I'm going to use the distributive property, and this is going to be 45 minus 9x. Now be careful with this one. This one's a little tricky. So the coefficient on the left side is positive 9, but the coefficient on the right side is negative 9. So we have different coefficients. Now once you realize that the coefficients are different, you can stop right there. Because which one of these three shows different coefficients? There's only one. And that is right here, right? When there's different coefficients, there is one solution, and you can stop right there. You don't even have to worry about the constants. All right, this next one, let's do the distributive property. This 3 is going to come down for now, and I'm going to multiply by positive 2. So that's going to give me positive 10x, and it's going to give me negative 12. And then on the right side, I'm going to do the distributive property again, and I'm going to get 10x minus 5. All right, I have some like terms that I can add together on this side. Now my like terms are the 3 and the negative 12. So we have 10x minus 9 on the left side. And on the right side, we have 10x minus 5. Okay, let's always start with the coefficients first. I have a 10 and a 10. So we have the same coefficient. So you should realize right away that that means this does not have one solution. Because if it did, it would have different coefficients. Same coefficient. Then we're going to compare our constants. We have a negative 9 and a negative 5, so we have different constants. Now when we have the same coefficient but we have different constants, that means we have no solution. Right? No solution. All right, last example. So for this one, we are going to start out with the distributive property. We have negative 6x plus 18 minus 21. I'm going to keep simplifying this left side right here. So I only have one term with an x. I'm just going to bring that one down for now. But then these two are like terms, right? I can add my positive 18 with my negative 21, and that's going to give me a negative 3. Now on the right side, 
to start out with my distributive property. And that's going to be 9x minus 3. And I'm going to bring down minus 3x. My like terms are a 9x and a negative 3x. Well, a positive 9 and a negative 3 give me a positive 6x. And then I'm going to bring down this minus 3. Okay, let's compare. I have a negative 6 and a positive 6. So I have different coefficients. Now again, remember, once you realize that you have different coefficients, you don't have to look at the constants, right? You are finished. Because when the coefficients are different, that tells us there is one solution. Okay, hopefully this was helpful and you guys understand how to determine the number of solutions for an equation. If you need to go back and watch the video a second time so it really sinks in, go ahead and do that. And if you have any questions, please ask. I'll see you next time.